Um, I think it's something that as soon as you start discussing it um, with people either in urban planning or even in emergency response, they realize immediately that, of course, it is being impacted uh, by development patterns such as urban sprawl. But um, I do feel that this is the first study that has actually tried to actually study it objectively and to try to demonstrate that impact. And um, in talking with various people about the results of this study, both in the emergency response uh, planning groups, but also, uh, as I said, in urban planning, it is actually something where a lot of people stand back and say, you know, you're right, we haven't really thought about that. Um, there's been a lot of work thinking about public transportation and I think a lot of recognition that things like uh, public transportation don't work very well in some of our newer suburban areas for various, you know, under, it's very logical reasons. You know, the definition of sprawl loosely is that uh, it's kind of characterized by very kind of lower density residential housing. And then you also have a separation of the residential areas from the commercial areas. And you also have kind of a lack of town centers. And then finally, you also have street networks that are generally based on the idea of a, what they call the loop and lollipop um, configuration, where you have a neighborhood with one main feeder road coming in and then a lot um, trying to maximize the number of cul-de-sacs off of that feeder road. And um, I think we all have experienced kind of the, as a, as a just a personal, you know, personal transportation um, experience, it does make trip distances longer. And even in these lower density areas, traffic ends up actually being sometimes an issue because it all concentrates on these areas. So all of that has been thought through. All of that has been well described, and I think all of us experience it. What was interesting and what um, my colleagues and I um, thought through was we had a realization that when you're trying to make EMS systems that work well and efficiently, all of those same factors um, make it more difficult to get ambulances to a specific place as efficiently as possible. And um, I think EMS is among a suite of things that we'll start to start thinking about. Such, you know, it's also going to include things like water supplies and things that you hear a lot about in the news. But I think we're going to have to grapple with the fact that it's more expensive and difficult and sometimes impossible to really provide very reliable emergency response in some of these brand new communities, the most sprawling areas in particular. Uh, I am also concerned just about uh, the aging population in our country. Um, obviously, older, um, you know, older people have a higher requirement for emergency care, and um, they've also been disproportionately affected by um, home prices that have declined in many areas. Um, and many f people have, are unable to leave their homes even though they desire to, uh, simply because their houses just aren't worth what they were. And I think those are the types of situations that we really, that make the results of this study, I think, very relevant. We did look at car crashes, so uh, some of the traffic injury data re regarding response time isn't as strong as things like cardiac arrest or respiratory arrest, where obviously the time responses are very uh, well defined and very well studied as well. So I think um, future work um, would, it would benefit greatly from being able to look at not just traffic crashes, but also looking at those types of EMS responses as well. And also, I would really um, also emphasize that this was looking at a county level so this is a, I see this as a preliminary analysis. Uh, I think subsequent analysis will, will benefit from being able to look at actual what they would refer to as neighborhood level effects. So all the way down to your particular house inside of a particular style of subdivision. And this, this, these results can't make specific comments about that yet, but I think that type of information system is coming and um, there are new tools becoming available that we should be able to start looking at those types of neighborhood level effects. So that should be exciting.